Hello everyone and welcome to the Atom Sharp YouTube channel. In this particular lecture, I want to go over that how we can get started with unit testing for our step tracker application. The step tracker application will be responsible for keeping track of the number of steps that you take. So it will have a label, it will have buttons that you can press to add your steps and also buttons to decrement your steps. But right now, if you see, we have our step tracker application over here, which doesn't really have anything in it. The first thing that we need to test is to actually test the model. So we don't even have a model over here and we don't even have a unit testing project. So let me go ahead and start by adding a unit testing project. I can simply click on the project, go to editor and add a new target and then search for the testing target. You'll see that you will have two different targets, UI testing bundle, which is to test and automate the UI testing, and a unit testing bundle, which is what we want, which is to test or write unit test. Let's go ahead and click on that, finish, and now we have our unit testing project right here. If you open the step tracker test, you'll see that there is some sort of a boiler level code already written for you, I'm going to remove most of that stuff so that we can start fresh. So when we are creating a step tracking application, a step tracker, a step counter, we will start by testing our models, like a step tracking or a step counter model. Now at this particular moment, we don't have a model. So we are using the TDD approach, the test driven development approach to write our failing test first. So let's go ahead and create our first test. I'm going to name it when creating instance of step counter. So that's my context. I know it's a long name of the class, but it is more readable. And all the tests that are under this particular context are going to be inside this particular class as functions should increment, not should increment, I guess when creating instance of the step counter should reset or should start with zero steps. So basically what we are saying is that when we create an instance of step counter, we should check that there are no more, there are zero steps because we just created the step counter. So let's go ahead and write our first test step counter equals to step counter. By the way, the step counter class does not really exist right now, but that's the whole point of unit test. The unit test is going to drive the architecture of the application. So now we have created the step counter and now we can say x assert zero step counter dot number of steps. Now this test, if you try to even run this, this test is not even going to compile because there is no such thing as step counter. And our test is telling us, well, you better go ahead and create a step counter. So we'll go back to our actual single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and create new folder called models. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file. And I will call it step counter. All right, now I can go ahead and create the step counter over here as a structure or a class. So I'm gonna go ahead and use structure, step counter, and I will have a property called number of steps, which will be integer and which will initialize to zero. Perfect. Okay, so now we have the step counter. Let's go back to our step tracking test and try to run this again. But again, we get the same issue. Basically, your test is saying that, well, I don't really know what exactly is step counter. And the reason is that the test is on in a different target and our application, the step tracker, is in a different target. So we need to tell our unit test that the step counter model or the class or the structure is in a different target and you have to import it from over there. 
In testable, uh, in test application, you can actually use testable import, and then you can import the whole module. So testable is a property wrapper or the attribute that is available in Swift language, and it allows your test target to import different modules. This is only available in your testing target so that it can start importing different modules which can be used for testing. And now you can see that it is imported, so the color over here is a little bit different. It's green and it is recognizable. Let's go ahead and run our first unit test, which is going to test that when we create an instance of step counter, the number of steps will be initialized to zero. So the first time the test is running, you're gonna see that it takes a little bit more time to run, but on the subsequent builds and subsequent running of the test, it will be faster. So we're still waiting for the test to run. And once the test is run, we will either get green or red. And here we go, we get green, which means the test has actually passed. So congratulations. Now, what will be our next test? Well, our next test is that when we call the increment counter or increment function on the step counter, then it should increment the number of steps. When incrementing or when calling increment on step counter, this is a test case, should increment successfully. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and create our step counter equals to step counter. And then we don't have the increment function, but that's the beauty of it. We are writing the name of the function as it exists. And now we are writing the test xct assert one and step counter dot number of steps. Now, if you run this, you're going to get a compilation error which is going to say that there is no such thing as increment. Now we can go over there in our model and now we can add this particular new function, increment function. Increment. And inside the increment function, we can increment the number of steps. Plus equals to one. Now if you try to build this, you can't really do that because this is a structure, so you have to mark it with mutating. Mutating, perfect. Let's go ahead and build it again. And now if you go back to our test, we need to make sure that the step counter is declared as a var instead of the let. And now we can actually go ahead and run the test. And now when you run the test, you can see it passes. This means that your increment function is working. Although this is a very, very simple test, but you get the idea of how we're proceeding. We're using the test to dictate what exactly is going on. Now, one of the things that you should work on next is how would you decrement the counter? So this will be your homework. How would you write a test that is going to decrement the counter and test that this is working correctly. And also, how would you implement a test that is going to make sure that the value of number of steps does not go into the negative number? So that's another test that you will write. So two tests you should write. When, when calling decrement on step counter, x ct test case then should decrement successfully. So that's the first test you're gonna write. So how would you do that one? And the other test that you're gonna write is that uh, when calling decrement counter, which is this one, should decrement successfully and also should make sure number of steps are greater than or equal to, or you can say greater than or equal to, 
are, are positive, basically. All right, so this is another test that you'll write, have to write. Obviously, you can word them in a different way, but you can see that now the context of the class is coming into play because when calling decrement on the step counter, there are two unit tests that we can actually write, which goes under this particular context. So go ahead, write these tests, and see if you can change the implementation of the step counter to include the decrement function and also to include that the decrement function doesn't allow the number of steps to go into the negative numbers. All of these videos that they are looking at for the unit testing are part of my new course that I'm working on. And if you want to be notified when the course is released, then go ahead and click the subscribe button and you'll get a notification when the course is available for purchase. Meanwhile, if you want to support this channel, then check out my Udemy courses. I have 23 courses and including the bestseller on Swift UI, which is the latest technology, the declarative uh, style interface from Apple. You can also learn Node.js, RxSwift, MapKit, data structure, JSON parsing. There is a lot of information, a lot of different courses that covers everything you need to know about iOS development. I also have courses on MVVM design pattern, which is a bestseller course, and also are the AR kit course, as well as a complete guide to lean controllers, which is going to show you how to create amazing apps. And mastering the Firebase also, if you're interested in Firebase with 4.9 rating. So all of these courses are available. And then the great thing is that the link to all of these courses or most of these courses is available in the YouTube description. So simply click on the link in the YouTube description and you will be able to get the best possible deal. Not $19.99, uh, you will get much better deal, all right? So go ahead, click on these courses uh, in the YouTube description and thank you very much.